What's up YouTube? So while I had this 2023 YZ450 apart, I wanted to do a valve adjustment overview video. This is not a complete how-to with every single piece you need to take off, but it's just uh, a quick overview giving you the idea behind doing a valve adjustment on these uh, 23s. because I'm about to do one on this one, but I have most of the bike already torn down already, so it's hard to kind of show you the step-by-step. -step. But basically, yeah, you're gonna take your head cover off. Uh, you're gonna check your valves. What does check your valves mean? You don't need to take out the timing chain tensioner. All you have to do is take off the top of the bike and pop this head cover off. After you do that, you're gonna take out these uh, ignition plugs right here. And I think it's a 17 you're gonna put right here and spin this engine around. Um, once you spin it around, I don't think you guys can see that in there. Maybe you can. Uh, but on the rotor in there, you're going to see a, it looks like an arrow. Um, you know, like an upside down V. That is going to match up with this notch. And when that happens, you're going to have a dot here and a dot here on your intake cam. This dot needs to be even with where the cam cap meets the, uh, you know, the mounting point on the head for the cam cap. You can see there's a line there. So that dot needs to be there and this dot needs to be there on the other side. That's how you know you're in top dead center on the right stroke. Uh, see your lobes right there. Your lobes on most bikes, um, your lobes will be facing like that, the, the one this way and one this way. Because of this backward engine, your lobes will be facing inward like this and like that, facing each other. That's how that is. And it's actually really nice. That is one thing I like about this is because with the lobes facing that way, there's it's really easy to get your feeler gauges in on these Yamahas. And especially this 23. Um, we're going to see. I think I have a feeler gauge here somewhere. Yep, here's some right here. So your valve specs are going to be 10 to 17 on your intake. And by 10 to 17, I mean 0 0.010 millimeter to 0 0.017 millimeter is going to be your intake. And then I, it's 0.15 millimeter to 0.22 millimeter on the exhaust. And you're just going to simply put your feeler gauge in right there. Oh, my screen went off. Okay, get your feeler gauges and you slide them between the cam lobe and the bucket. You can see... This bike is banjo tight. I can't even get a 5 in, and this is supposed to be a 10 at the tightest. Okay, so this uh, this bike, I think, is around, uh, I've already measured all these, by the way, but they're all banjo tight. 30 hours on this bike, why are they all banjo tight? Well, because we sucked a bunch of dirt through the intake, and it's mashing up against the between the valve and the valve seat, which you know, will make them get very tight. So, um, basically you don't need to throw a bunch of math into it. If they are on the slightly tighter end of the spectrum, all you need to do is get your digital caliper out, measure the shim. Uh, I guess I should tell you real quick how you get to the shims. Um, you are going to take out your timing chain tensioner right here. Uh, pro tip, break that outer bolt loose first and it'll be easier because otherwise you have to put it in a vise or something later so take your timing chain tensioner off and then you eight millimeter uh, six millimeter bolts but eight millimeter heads on the top all these black ones and these cam caps will come right off i'm about to take those off now so i'll just show you so i measured all these already how do i come to the conclusion that I need to go two shim sizes on these and try again. Well, it's because it's because with these shims, so 0 0.10 is really your your tightest tolerance on the intake. If I've got a 0.5 and it won't even fit in, 
uh, you can't really go much. You can't really go any smaller because the gauges get so flimsy. You can't get them in there anyway. So you know if you can't even get a .5 in, the hot cams shims come in point uh, zero five increments anyway. So if you can't get a .5 in, you know you have to go at least two shim sizes. So I would just take these shims out, measure them, and then go two shim sizes smaller on the hot cams shim kit. I do love how there's no half moons. No half moons. There, get out of there. Yeah, that's great. All right, so I'll just lift up one side of the cam, pull the bucket out with the magnet. Yep, shim stayed in the spring. There we go. All right, guys, so it's got a 2.00 shim. Uh, in the exhaust side right here which to me seems very very small for a shim on a newer bike but we need it no we need to go two sizes 0 0.05 aside so i'm going to use this 1.90 and that should get us really close all right, so we're just raising these cams up instead of taking them out because the bike's already in time. So a lot of times on, on many of these bikes, you can just loosen up the temp tensioner and raise the cams up, and you can sometimes get by without even taking them out of time. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen the rest of the way on this bike, but either way, we just put it in time so we can put it in time again. It's not a big deal. But I'm just showing you a trick. You bring these up on this side a lot of times uh, on the cowies i can actually reach up on the cam and sit it out of the way without taking it off the chain so uh, it's kind of handy all right we just checked this other exhaust valve it too had a 2.0 shim uh, and we put the same thing in it yep all four shims were 2.0 all right, so we just finished our swap out. Weirdly enough, all four of these had 2.00 shims. Um, we swapped them all out to one, you know, 1.90. Uh, a couple of the measurements were 1.89 or 1.91, but it's close enough. So now we're going to put these caps back on uh, and uh, check our check our adjustment again. All right, now that we went two sizes, we're checking here. I've got a 10. It's loose on this side. The 10 is snug, has good drag on the other one. So we know we're good there. This is a 13, so this is like right perfectly in the middle of the range. Just again, we're going between the lobe and the bucket. That 13 goes in and it has a little bit of drag. If you wanna double check yourself, I've got a 15 here. This 15 will go in, but it's got quite a bit of drag, a little too much. So we know this valve clearance is around a 13 to 14. This one's around a 10 or 11. They're both in spec. They're fine. Uh, let's move to the exhaust. Okay, the exhaust valve should be a 15 to 22. Um, we got a 15 here. Feels loose. 15 loose let's bump up to maybe a 19 or 20 all right next we're going to try an 18 see how it feels there is some drag with the 18 but it's still a little bit loose so now we got the 20 we got the 20. what's wrong with that young uh, just adjusting valves and doing a top end. So the 20 goes in and it's quite a bit of drag. So 
we're in good shape we're probably looking at 18 19 clearance there same with this one so we're good we went two sizes on all four of them and they all worked out if we really wanted to we could take this back off and probably squeeze one more shim size out of this one if we wanted but we don't need to it's within the spec so we're good to go make sure it's in time put it back together